Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's find the inertia tensor, at least some of the elements, especially diagonal elements, for a situation where we have two masses instead of one mass. How is that done? Well, we need to find the contribution of each mass separately in the same way that we did it for a single mass. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We have mass one. It's equal to one, one unit, let's say one kilogram, whatever the units are, and the position is 0, 1, 1, so x equals 0, y equals 1, z equals 1, and we have a second mass, which is equal to 2, let's say 2 kilograms, and the position is x equal 1, y equals negative 1, and z equals 0. So let's go ahead and start with the diagonal elements. Here we have ixx, the two contributions of the two masses, so m1 is equal to 1 times x squared, oh no, y squared and z squared, now y is 1, so we have 1 squared plus 1 squared, and to that we add m2, which is 2, times y squared, so now we're over here, so y squared would be minus 1 squared, and z in this case is equal to 0, and so that is equal to uh, 1 plus 1 is 2 times 1, that's 2, and then here we have 2 times 1, which is 2 again. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So that element is equal to 4. And that's, of course, the moment of inertia relative to any rotations or any accelerations around the x-axis. Starting uh, with uh, now, uh, now doing the second element, the middle diagonal element. So that's equal to 1 for m1 times x times x squared plus z squared. So x squared is 0. So 0 squared plus z squared, which is 1, plus the second mass, which is 2, times x squared plus z squared, x squared, that's 1 squared, z squared is 0 squared. So here we have 1 times 1, and we have 2 times 1, that would be a total of 3. So that's the value of the moment of inertia relative to the rotation around the y-axis. Now we have the third diagonal uh, element, so we have 1, times x1 squared, so that would be 0 squared, plus y1, that would be 1 squared, plus 2 times x, that would be 1 squared, plus a negative 1 squared. So that would be 1 times 1, plus, well, kitty. that's a noisy kitty, isn't it? All right, again, here we have 1 times 1 is 1, plus 2 times 2, that's 4, 1 plus 4 is 5. So there's the three diagonal elements, 4, 3, and 5. Now let's find at least one pair of the off diagonal elements, just to see how it's done. So here we have a minus 1 times x1, x1 is 0, and y1 is 1. But since we have that 1, 0 there, this term goes to 0, plus we have a negative m2, that's minus 2, times x2, which is 1, times y2, which is a minus 1, and minus 2 times a minus 1 is equal to a positive 2. So there we do have one off diagonal element. Of course, we could do the same for the others, but at least now you can see how it's done, how we get the diagonal elements and the off diagonal elements in the case we have two or potentially many more masses. If they're point masses, this is how you do it. Now the question is, what if we don't have point masses, what if we have a mass distribution and we're trying to find the inertia tensor? Well, if you need to know how to do that, stay tuned, we have some videos coming up that will show you how to do that. Those things are a little bit more complicated.